Hello, my name is Gib Bernhardt, and I am pleased to be the host for Conversations About Geology. The program today is entitled Chasing the Magical Blue Shifts. Every geologist alive has some mysterious rock, like the Holy Grail, that they have wanted to find, see, and touch. For some, it is a rock like kimberlite. Kimberlite rocks are the most important source of mined diamonds today. For others, it is a fossil like the trilobite who roamed the Paleozoic seafloor. For me, that geologic fantasy has always been the sleek, shimmery, blue metamorphic rock named blue schist. Blue schist is an unusual rock that is formed under very high pressure and very low temperatures found only in the subsurface on a subducting green plate at convergent zones beneath a continental plate. Ever since I first saw a hand sample of blue schist in undergraduate school in Texas, I have wanted to stand near an outcrop of the rock because of its significance to plate tectonics and the history of geology. So to me, blue schist is synonymous with the theory of plate tectonics and is a symbol of the progress we have made as a science and represents a paradigm shift in the geologic thinking. This story, Chasing the Magical Blue Schist, is about my first encounter with blue schist near Mitchell, Oregon. This odyssey involves the birth of the Farallon Plate, the rocks associated with marine plates, and the collision of volcanic island arcs riding on the Farallon Plate with the massive North American Plate. A picture album to accompany this radio broadcast may be viewed on the Facebook page, Conversations About Geology. The following seismic sounds were captured by hydrophones near the Aleutian Islands and are the sounds of plate movement at a subduction zone near Tohoku, Japan that occurred on March 11, 2011. Throughout the history of the Earth, the surface of the planet has been broken into lithospheric plates that float on the asthenosphere. The rigid lithosphere includes the crust and the upper portion of the upper mantle. The plastic asthenosphere lies below the lithosphere and is, high, is the highly viscous, mechanically weak, and ductally deforming region of the upper mantle of the Earth. It lies below the lithosphere at depths between approximately 80 and 440 kilometers or 50 and 273 miles below the surface. The lithosphere is divided into 15 plates that are separated into two basic groups. One, plates that are mainly oceanic crust, and two, plates that contain both continental and oceanic crust. Some plates are quite huge, like the European and North American plates, and some are quite small, like the Juan de Fuca plate off of Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. In the oceanic regions, most of the plates separate and go in opposite directions due to upwelling convecting mantle material. As the plastic material in the mantle upwells like a lava lamp, it reaches a depth of about 60 miles beneath the surface of the earth. At that point, some of the upwelling mantle material melts and becomes magma. The rest, the non-melted portion, is diverted in the opposite direction by opposing mantle convection cells. The crust separates at mid-ocean ridges as a series of contrasting normal faults. Mid-oceanic ridges are areas of volcanism often forming volcanic islands. The marine lithosphere is the thinnest at mid-ocean ridges, thickens and becomes deeper beneath the ocean as the marine plates move away from the ridge. The marine plate lithosphere is composed predominantly of mafic material that is less dense than the denser ultramafic asthenosphere and literally floats on the asthenosphere. As the marine plates progress laterally, they become cooler, thicker, and denser, and eventually they sink into the mantle. This occurs at convergent zones where two lithospheric plates come together. The oceanic plate is subducted or dives under a less dense continental and or oceanic plate. 
The convergent zones are areas of active earthquakes and volcanism. When the converging plates reach about 60 miles deep, the plate becomes dehydrated due to heat and pressure. The superheated steam rises into the overlying lithospheric mantle and melts the overlying lithospheric mantle rock due to enhanced chemical reactions. The magma or melted rock is less dense than the surrounding material and rises like a bubble in water, eventually moving through fractures in the continental or oceanic crust to form volcanic arcs on the surface that are parallel to the convergent zone. There are three major types of convergent plate boundaries. One, oceanic-oceanic boundary. Two, oceanic-continental boundary. And three, continental-continental plate boundary. When a convergent boundary forms between plates of oceanic lithosphere, the plate that is older, thicker, and denser subducts under the less dense plate. At the area of dehydration on the subducting plate, mantle material melts and forms basaltic island arcs above the downward subducting plate. Examples today are the Aleutian Islands, the Japanese Islands, and the Indonesian Islands. When oceanic and continental plates converge, the oceanic plate always subducts beneath the continental plate because the marine plate is denser than the continental plate. At the area of dehydration, the superheated steam melts the lithospheric mantle, and the basaltic magma rises and mixes with continental crust material to form an andesitic continental volcanic arc, like the Cascades in California, Oregon, and Washington, and the Andes of South America. When subduction brings two continents together, limited subduction occurs, and the collision of the continents halts the entire subduction process. The compression and contraction of the crust in the zone doubles the thickness of the continental crust, creating high mountains like the Himalayas in India, Tibet, and Nepal, and the Alps in Europe. Plate movement is thought to be driven by a combination of three factors. Factor one, irregularities in the bottom of the lithospheric mantle due to variations in topography and density provide surfaces for the underlying convecting asthenospheric mantle to push against and propel the plates away from the divergent zone. Mantle convection is the slow creeping motion of solid, uh, or solid but plastic silicate rock caused by, convec um, by convecting currents carrying heat from the interior of the earth to the surface. Factor two, the weight of the descending slab pulls on the plate and helps drag it into the mantle. In factor three, it is theorized that subduction from broken portions of the descending slab aids pulling the slab downward. After the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea during the Triassic period, the Farallon plate was the ancient oceanic plate that began subducting under the west coast of the North American continent. The Farallon plate was also responsible for transporting old island arcs and various fragments of continental crustal material and accreting them to the North American plate. These fragments from elsewhere are called terrains, sometimes exotic terrains. Much of the western North America is composed of these accreted terrains. Today's Juan de Fuca marine plate is the last remnant of the once huge Farallon plate. At one time, the Farallon plate occupied about a third of the Panthalassa seafloor, roughly an area of 39.3 million square miles. North America today has a surface area of 9.5 million square miles. During Middle Triassic, about 220 million years ago, the Farallon's subduction zone near Mitchell in north central Oregon curved northeastward into Washington and curved southeastward into Nevada. During this period, the terrains of the Blue Mountain, located at that time parallel to the eastern Idaho border in northeastern Oregon and southeastern Washington, and the terrains of the eastern uh, Klamath Mountains, located at that time in southeastern Oregon and Nevada, consisted mainly of sedimentary formations that have accumulated along the old continental margin. Those terrains were both tightly folded and heavily injected with molten granitic magma. The marine te tectonic plates are composed of rocks that make up an assembly of rocks known as an opiolite suite. 
It is interesting to note that the age of ophiolite formation is often close to the age of their emplacement into the continental crust. Ophiolites are found in all the major mountain belts of the world. The subduction-related chemistry of ophiolites and their association with mountain belts suggests that their formation and emplacement are related to oceanic closure and continental clo collision rather than oceanic opening and seafloor spreading as was first thought. A typical sequence of rocks forming the ophiolite suite are as follows. On the bottom, in the lithospheric mantle, are ultramafic peridotites, overlain by mostly black granular gabbro at the base of the oceanic crust, overlain by swarms of black aphanitic which are microgranular, not visible to the eye, basalt dikes through the middle oceanic crust. Those are overlain by black basalt with pillow structures at the top of the oceanic crust. And finally, the pillow basalts are overlain by multicolored microcrystalline bedded chert in organic marine black shell sedimentary rock in the deepest marine. Along the journey of the marine plate, the rocks of the ophiolite suite may undergo metamorphism, either at the divergent zone along its route or at the convergent zone while it's undergoing subduction. Metamorphism describes the mineralogical, chemical, and textural changes to pre-existing rocks in an essentially solid state by changing temperature, pressure, and or by the addition or subtraction of fluids. There are three grades of metamorphism depending on temperature. Low grade metamorphism occurs between temperatures ranging from about 200 degrees centigrade to around 400 degrees centigrade. Medium grade metamorphism occurs at temperatures ranging from about 400 degrees centigrade to about 600 degrees centigrade. And high grade metamorphism occurs at temperatures ranging from about 600 degrees centigrade. And if the rock is dehydrated, up to around 1100 degrees centigrade. At divergent zones in the presence of hot hydrothermal marine water, peridotite and gabbro will transform into greenish black serpentinite. Serpentines are the greenish brownish or spotted minerals commonly found in serpentinite rocks. The texture of serpentine range from fibrous to platy. Serpentinization is a geologically low temperature metamorphic process. When found in an outcrop in the presence of peridotite or gabbro, it indicates the oceanic lithospheric mantle or lower oceanic crust has been pushed or raised to the surface. In the lower and middle crust, gabbro and basalt will metamorphose into hydrothermal chloride or greenstone. Greenstone is the name of a non-foliated metamorphic rock that contains green minerals like chloride, iron magnesium mica, and or green amphiboles. When located in outcrop, it is indicative of marine mantle ophiolite, or the bottom of the marine plate has been thrusted to the surface. A metasedimentary rock and two metamorphic rocks are associated with the ophiolite suite at convergent boundaries. As oceanic crust descended beneath the uh, continent, volcanic rocks, mainly basalt, making up the oceanic crust and the marine sediments deposited on top of it were scraped off and accreted or added to the leading edge of the overriding plate. This resulted in widespread deformation with development of thrust faults and folding. The deformation and emplacement results in a complex, chaotic assemblage of diverse rock types that some refer to as melange. In geology, a melange is a large-scale breccia, a breccia or angular fragments of broken rock. It is, map it is a mappable body of rock characterized by a lack of continuous bedding and the inclusion of fragments of rock of various lithologies and of all sizes contained in a fine-grained deformed matrix. Rocks altered by high-pressure metamorphism, such as blue schist, were in place during this episode. Blue schist is a metavolcanic rock that forms by the metamorphism of basalt and rock with similar composition at high pressures and low temperatures, ranging from 200 to about 500 degrees Celsius, approximately corresponding to a depth of 9 to 18 and a half miles. 
The blue color of the rock comes from the presence of the predominant minerals glaucophane and lawsonite. Blue schist may also appear blue, black, gray, or blue-green in outcrop. When the plate descends to a depth greater than 30 miles, where temperatures are above 600 degrees centigrade, dehydration, high-grade metamorphism of the basalt in the ophiolite suite occurs, creating the met metamorphic rock eclogite. The fresh rock can be striking in appearance with red to pink garnets in a green matrix of sodium-rich pyroxene. According to Hotz et al., four samples of blue schist from the eastern Klamath Mountains near Wairika, Northern California, and from north central Oregon near Mitchell have radiometric ages of approximately 220 million years, Middle Triassic. In north central Oregon, blue schist blocks occur in strongly sheared upper Paleozoic, metasedimentary, and metavolcanic rocks overlain by Cretaceous sedimentary rocks. So this means that the subduction process at that locality stopped approximately when the blue schist was metamorphosed 220 million years ago in Middle Triassic and was part of the Farallon subduction zone associated with the delivery of the Blue Mountains accreted terrains into eastern Oregon. I hope you have enjoyed this program about chasing the magical blue schist. This was the story of how the blue schist found near Mitchell, Oregon was a small but significant part of the creation of the Blue Mountains of Eastern Oregon. It was about how we can use the rocks associated with the marine oceanic plate to locate where long extinct convergent zones are located. And personally for me, it was about seeing, feeling, and experiencing that elusive blue schist in its natural setting. Any errors that may manifest from the this discussion or from my own interpretations of the resources I have referenced and do not reflect on those authors. This program is for educational benefit of the listeners. If you are interested in learning more about the geology of the Pacific Northwest, please consider taking my geology courses at the Oregon Coast Community College. It would be wonderful to see you there. I hope you tune in again. Until we meet next time, Please remember that something as insignificant as a hand sample of blue schist has a history of epic proportions, and that the future of our planet can only be predicted from the evidence we have discovered from the past. I wish to close by saying, go outside, take a walk, and have a good look around, because the world is a beautiful place, and only our curiosity can make that beauty meaningful. So long.